Yes, people, welcome to another episode of Beam. I'm your host, JR, and we're back 2022. I've got a special guest, a brother I've known for over 20 years now. Um, it's Emmanuel Jones, aka the UK's financial advisor. How you doing, my bro? I'm good, my man. Cheers! Yes. I got the introduction, baby. <laughs> that I'm well, man. Honestly, we give thanks, man. Nah, it's a man, new year. Look. It's been a crazy last couple of years. So for the sure. fact that we're here, standing and breathing, you know, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for coming through as usual, man. Um, so let's get into it, bro, mm. man. Explain what you do as a financial advisor. Love that. So <clears throat> let me be more specific. So with my role, it's, I'm more of an insurance specialist. Mm. So it's in the arm um, when it comes to, say, looking after people's um, life insurances, for example, health insurance, income protection, even sorting out some stuff regarding the home insurance stuff. So building on contents, um, I, I work whereby we can do some form of asset financing, commercial financing. So there's a lot of things that we can offer. And it's just really about just protecting what you love. And I guess the person that we love the most is ourselves and our family, right? Right, right. But the sad thing is that not enough of us are actually putting the right things in place to cover that. Mm. And one thing I always say that, oh, GoFundMe is not the answer, man. It's not the truth. <laughs> and that's what's killing our people, man, honestly. So your FCA regulated mm. is something that we, we see across the financial industry. What does it mean to be FCA regulated? Yeah, so to be FCA regulated, it means that look, you're acknowledged by the governing body. You know, that overseas and basically the, you've got the chance of the Exchequer, you've got the HM Treasury, and it just means in a nutshell that, you know, that what you're doing, you actually are allowed and you are licensed to actually give information and advice on that topic for my service insurances. So it just gives anyone that I come into contact with just that reassurance and that peace of mind that my interests put their best interests first and that I'm not trying to go in there trying to say, look, sell this to you and say, yeah, take this at this amount. Mm. Whereas I'm actually going through a, a true thoughtful process whereby we're actually looking at X, Y, Z, breaking it down and tailoring it to your comfortability and affordability. In the nutshell, it's just peace of mind and say, look, you are legally allowed to do what you say you can do. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. And um, yeah, man, as you said, man, GoFundMe's killing our people. Oh, my man! My man. <laughs> um, but let's talk about life insurance in general mm. um, and especially in the black community, man. Mm. Like, why is life insurance such a, like a, a taboo in the black community? People don't want to talk about it. So the main one that, that I tend to hear or that tends to go around is like, ah, why do I need insurance, you know? <laughs> Jesus is my insurance. And I'm not a hair that, but technically the word of God is your assurance because his word of God, the word of God is the assurance. But if you were to pass away, I'm not being funny, is Holy Spirit going to send manna from heaven to provide for your funeral? <laughs> yeah, We're doing GoFundMe's or certain communities, you know, we having to go around, obviously put money in towards the funeral. Which don't get me wrong, that's good for a community perspective and obviously community engagement. However, you can set up a simple policy. You know, in your 20s, your 30s, even in your 40s, if worst case scenario, you know, for a good price. Some of us are paying £100 on phone bills. Yeah, fact. That's mental. <laughs> or we're spending X, Y, Z on our car insurance. Yeah. But then for your own life, you're haggling for your life insurance. That's the one that, like, that's the one that really bug bungles my mind. Like, even I use a true example. So um, I saw that someone's policy the other day. I was doing a review for them. So they were paying, I think it was around 20 something, 20 something pounds. So the life insurance amount wasn't a lot, so I gave them something called critical illness as well. So I said, look, you've got a certain number of children now, let's double the life insurance. It makes sense if anything wants to happen. So the price went up by like 10 pounds. Oh my days. The haggling said, no, Hagrid. but you know, EJ, but it's 10 pounds. I'm like, I know, but let's break it down per week. It's two pound 50, let's mm, be honest. Mm, mm. And coming from where we come from, so that's, that's Woolies money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> chicken fact. and chips money. Yeah, that's a two piece right there. <laughs> that's two piece. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> so, so I do get it, especially with what's going on with, with the crunch, in terms of like the COVID, people have lost jobs, let's be honest. Then they had the whole thing about um, furlough, obviously people's, um, amount of money that they were earning from work got reduced quite a bit. So I understand that. Mm. But what I will say, the first thing you should look, look, look into, definitely the most important direct debit has to be your life insurance. Yeah, yeah. And you know? um, it's funny you say that because you, know, you just mentioned things like critical illness cover mm. and things like that. I'm not too sure if people know about the different types. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, talk to us about that, man. What's the different types of life insurance people can get? Yeah, so the most, I start with life, I'll cut off sort of life insurance. With life insurance, there's two main types. So you've got whole of life, and then you've got a level term. A whole of life is the name, whole of life. And what I do, because whenever I speak, I try not to give too much jargon because it can just confuse people. So I try to put it in layman's terms. So if you go for a whole of life policy, say you're age 21 of 100K, right? Say now, by God's grace, you're able to see over the age of 100, right? Mm. You've taken out that policy at 21 for 100K whole of life. Argument, I'm just throwing it out there. It might be 20 pounds, 25 pounds a month, roughly maybe. Say now, you've now taken out this policy at 21, but you're taking it out to the age of retirement, 68, 65, or 70, depending on where you see fit. 
for that policy, it might be six pounds a month. Mm. You, you see where I'm coming yeah, from? Yeah, yeah, However, yeah. However, now, chances are, well, not chances, you never know where life comes or what life may throw us but you may outlive that policy. Mm. You know, someone like myself, when I say, okay, let's review it every couple of years and we can extend the term, because it kind of makes it, kind of works out in a nice way. Whereas with the um, whole of life, it's just whole of life. As in when you pass away, you know it's a guaranteed payout. Yeah. However, most people won't take out a life insurance policy at 21, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, We're living yeah, yeah. life, some people are at uni, or finishing uni, first graduate job, or yeah. whatever it is that they're doing. They're not thinking about it, they just want to chop life. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, right. So people tend to think, okay, maybe something happens. Maybe they've lost a loved one or experienced certain things. I'm like, you know what? I need to look into, say, some form of like personal protection. Well, that being life insurance, for example. So that's that element. So whole of life versus term. I normally advise term because it, it works out cheaper. Mm. Then obviously what you've got now is you've got different covers you can look at. You can look at cover as a level term or like an indexing term. Level term, this means in a nutshell, is what you're paying, say, from day dot is the same up until when the policy finishes. Indexing, depending on where you, where you see fit or where you stand in terms of like your, your mindset on views on, on money, it might be beneficial to you. Reason being is because, for example, we know £1.50 today ain't technically be £1.50 in 20 years' time. Inflation, there you exactly. go. Exactly. So if you do it with indexing, it's in line with inflation. So RPI, the retail price and indexing. Mm. So you know, look, what you've set out as that <laughs> 100K will be worth 100K in 20 years' time. Yeah. So people like that, they like that. But not everyone likes to see the direct debits go up every single year. Mm. So it comes down to what side of the fence do you sit on? So that's the good thing with these covers. You've got, you've got, very, you've got various options. And it's about selecting the option that makes best for you. Yeah, you know? yeah. And if someone like myself is just helping you to... To achieve or, or to put pinpoint which one makes most sense for you. Yeah, man, I hear that. And you know, like I said, um, we, we've had um, financial advisors on the on the show before. Mm. Shouts out to Emmanuel Suko, mm. Paul Perry, and, mm. and they've they've been Come they've on. given us the game Come on this. On. You Come see on. what I'm saying? Um, but you've got your own company, Stay in the Loop Advice. Um, talk to us about that, man. Like you know, if someone wants to book a con consultation yeah. with you. What what can they get? What can they expect? Yeah, no. So it's it's a free consultation, and I always say, as 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 my strap plan, everyone likes the word free, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, with that, it's literally just booking a free consultation. You know, normally lasts. I don't like to rush the consultations. I would say, as a minimum, it might be at least half an hour. I've had some really good consultations whereby we're going on for like an hour and a half, two hours. Mm. Again, I'm not I'm not charging anyone a fee for that. You know, my whole thing, especially with our people, it's it's important. Like, and I even I saw someone on Twitter the other day, and sometimes with Twitter, I I like to take it with a pinch of salt. But there's things that you see on there that's really hard hitting. Yeah, the truth. You know? And, and yeah. the lady she shared it, it was very sad that she looked, her mum passed away. You know, there was no life insurance. They thought they had something in place to find out that it expired and no one had gone to see the mum or the mum wasn't aware. So the mum obviously didn't go to review the policy. <clears throat> that being said, now she's like, oh, can we contribute towards the funeral? Mm. And for me, when, seeing that as, as, as an advisor, it upsets me all the right time, man. Yeah, I'm like, the information's been put out there. But it's almost like, I get it, life happens. But I just wish if we maybe make, I want to make it a conscious decision that, you know what, this is just part of life admin. You know, mm. we know we pay for council tax, utility bills, mortgage, rent, whatever your situation is. Let's just add the insurance on top to that. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Once yeah. that's done, peace of mind. You know, well, obviously I know we'll talk more about, I'll explain more about trusts. Definitely. You know, beneficiaries. That just means that, you know, you, you avoid inheritance tax. Money gets released a lot quicker. If not, there's something called probate, which also we can delve more into. And it's just things you just want to avoid. Yeah, know? yeah. Peace of mind. That's just my, that's just, that's, that's the message that I preach. Yeah, so. man. Like, you can't put a price on your peace of mind. Oh, you see what I'm saying? So, yeah, that, that makes sense, man. But um, as you said, man, like, it's, it's a full consultation. It's not mm. just about insurance. You know what I'm saying? Like, you talk about saving money. You see what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, obviously... Where we are at the moment, pandemic, money's mm -hmm. tight for, for right. a lot of people. So right. it's not easy. It's not easy at all, mm. man. So, um, but like, what are some of the top tips you would give people in terms of like saving money? Like, what's mm. some of the top tips you would advise, man? Do you know what? The, the, the main thing that I would say personally, and there's always there's the cliche ones that everyone hears, so I don't really want to repeat those ones. But what I would definitely encourage everyone to do, especially now we're in January, right? Start of the year. Almost have like a financial cleanse. Mm. Almost look at what's the diaries that I'm paying that I really don't know. Like even for me, I, I was, when I was doing mine, I said, no, this is Adobe that's coming out of my account. That's 15. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't even use Adobe. I'm like, why am I paying this? Yeah, and then do the maths, 15 pound times 12, quick maths, whatever. And I'm like, no, why am I paying that? Yeah, yeah. Gone. Facts. Don't even ask this question like, do I really need Netflix? I'm in an urn, but I said, you know what, Bridget and season two's coming out. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> and I see what they're bringing out. I was like, nah, I'll just, I'll just be honest, but yeah, yeah. Like, if you don't need it, even that Sky bill that you're paying, yeah. you know, if that Sky bill's telling you £107 a month, my mans, 
you can let that one go. You know, yeah. there's, there's Freeview TV. You know, there's some every- people don't even watch TV these days, bro. You see what I'm saying? So, like, I'm gonna got you with me on Sky. Bro, I watch two channels, Sky Sports News and Sky Sports One, bro. Oh, bro. And that's it. No sense. <laughs> so, no sense. Even bro. my children had enough to like, Daddy, like, can we watch something else? They <laughs> know, straight sports. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, definitely do the cleanse. So just go through, look look what's coming out direct debit wise. What doesn't make sense? You know, what can you reduce? Um, I even encourage a lot of people, if your phone bill, if your phone bill is too high, just find out if there's a way you can kind of buy out the contract. Mm. And I, I encourage him only if you can. Yeah. A key thing I would say is, well, personally, with me, my phone that I've got is an iPhone 11. I'm like, until that phone is on its last leg, bro. I'm not getting a new phone. I, I was caught up in that world one yeah, every year or every two years. I've got to get the new phone, latest phone. Yeah, look, I've got the iPhone, whatever it is at the time. But that's just what they do, the consumerism. So that way, yeah. you're paying a new contract, you're paying it over the odds, and it's like, do I really need to do that? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to talk more about you know, money, insurance, mm. financial advising, but people that follow you know that you and your wife are active on the socials. And providing that relationship advice, bro. You see <laughs> what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, man. Like, what what made you and your wife like start giving out relationship advice? That's a good question. You know, um, that's a really good question. I don't think it's a thing whereby. I think it just kind of happened naturally. Mm. I guess there's people that knew our story, what is very intrigued, and would ask us a lot of questions. And we just thought, you know what? People can say you guys should get a YouTube channel. And I was kind of like, at first I was a bit anti. I was like, no, I don't really want to put my information out there. Mm. You know, especially if you're just being a man. You're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I don't want to make myself exposed or whatever. But I was like, you know what? There's nothing to lose. Mm. And we started putting, so when we got, um, no, so before we got married, actually, we had done like a, um, so for our, our wedding guests, we'd done like a pre-wedding video. Mm. So that got a good, rece- a very good reception. So it was like, all oh, right, cool. Like, we kind of like being on camera. And then our friend, who's actually my daughter's godfather, is like, no, nah, like, you are kind of, you are good, like, right? You should, people would actually pay to listen to this. Mm. I'm like, all right, let's just see what, how it goes. So when the video came out, you know, got, got some decent views, started putting out some content, and then, yeah, we just found out we ended up talking about love and relationships. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's been like that since. But she's really passionate about that. Like, she really, that's her thing. So she's even studying to be a counsellor. So that's what she'd done, that's something related to that uni. So now she's really following that, that pursuing that to obviously get um, her full qualification. So she's run with that. So she's got her own platform called Rules of Relationship. So quick yeah, plug, man. check that out. Yeah, check that out for sure. <laughs> no, check that out for so, real. So um, now she's doing anything, and I just think we're just real people. We've been through real things. You know, yeah. we've been together for a long time, so we can share our experiences. That's yeah. what we're saying. I guess sometimes we live in a, in a generation in a world where there's. I don't want to say it is what it is. It's facade sometimes. Bro, do you know what? Yeah, it's funny you say that because I was going to like, you know, people that, that follow you and follow mm. your journey mm. know that you, know, you and your wife have been together mm. for a long time mm. and oh, been through ups and downs. Mm. Um, but everyone's asking that question, bro, man. What's the secret to the you know, <laughs> successful marriage? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but you, got, you two are couple what? goals for real, for real. No, so. I love blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I always say? With, with relations, especially a one whereby you've got intentions. You know, because anyone that obviously are, oh, especially guys, will talk to me, like, no, oh, Eve, like, oh, give me the tea, like, give me, like, you know, the insight. Yeah. And I say, like, what, anyone that you're especially at a certain age, what's your intention? Let's be honest, are you just there just to have fun? But then, okay, fun until what point? Mm. You know, or are you trying to build? My whole thing is just with my missus, how our minds are kind of aligned. You need to be someone that's kind of aligned with what your journey is and what you're trying to go, what you're trying to achieve, innit? And obviously, mm. vice versa. She's trying to build something, I'm trying to build something. So I'm like, all right, I'm seeing the traits. So I'm like, okay, we can build something together. Mm. I always say, look, you know, no man is, a, no one person is an island, right? Mm. But if you've got a partner that's in your corner, vice versa, you can achieve and, and do so much more. Facts. You know, and I think this, this us having that, that, that same mindset and that same connection just helps. That's what's got us far. But with relationships, I, I've realised that it, it will, what's the word, it will humble you, you know? Your, your mindset, the way you see things. Remember, we're, we're both two different people, mm. two different upbringings. Yeah, we might both be African, but two ways of looking at things, two ways of doing things, interpreting things. It's almost like, in a way, being able to, okay, no, cool, I know I'm gonna digress, but I'll come back to that point. So, even one of, one of my conversations I was having with some of my friends, and I was just talking about, especially as men, being vulnerable. And it's so crazy, because I was like, growing up, I never saw my dad be vulnerable to my mom. Yeah, <laughs> especially in the African household. Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. my dad's an African, African man, so yeah. it's just like, raw, like, and for me, I'm just like, rah, that I can actually do that with my missus. And mm. even I'm just like, rah, that's weird because I, I, no one showed me that, you know, but I've realised that's for my own greater good. Especially if, say, you're going through certain ups and downs. Mm. Who do you go to? 
And let's be honest, a lot of us men don't go to anyone. Facts. You know, and it's sad because even if you look at statistics, we're talking about obviously suicides in men. It's crazy, bro. It's, the stats are, are, yeah, are shocking, they're, let's they're be high. honest. You know? high. And I'm saying that always says, especially to a lot of my bedrooms, that a hurt person can't raise a child. Because mm. hurt people hurt people, right? So now my whole thing is I'm just like, raw, like my own is I want to be very conscious with my children that they see a home just filled with love. Yeah. That's what me and always said, that no matter what, they don't have to see love because if they're going to have their children now, it's going to get well, me carry be their on. foundation. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I yeah. think that's very, that's very imper- imperative in a relationship. So communication, you know, being each other's biggest supporter, biggest encourager, it's key. That's what I find as, as a foundation for yeah, a successful man. relationship. And, like, those things are, are, are big and, you know, uh, again, keep referring back to just how open you've been in your journey mm-hmm. um, with your wife. Like, it hasn't been always ups and we, mm. we started this by saying, you know, a lot of facades out there in mm. terms of people like looking at the perfect relationship. But yeah, man, like, why did you feel it was important to talk about the bad times as well? You see what I'm mm. saying? Like, the challenges in your marriage, mm. in your relationship. Like, why did you feel it was important to talk about that? Do you know what? I think <clears throat> we're just honest people. Mm. I'm not saying go and tell everyone the whole damn business, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but I just think these things are real. People want to see what actually goes on, what actually, what actually happens. And I think people, people rate that, mm. they respect that. Because I know with me, if I, if I want to know something, I want to feel like you're being genuine, I want to feel like you're being wholehearted. Mm. If you're not, I'm like, mm, I'm just kind of sad, I'm like, oh, whatever, if that makes sense. So I feel like just knowing how we are, me and my missus, I'm like, no, like, bro, this is... This is how it is. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Like I even say anyone that knows me, like, right, since now having my third child and now working from home, it's an adjustment. Don't get me wrong; it's a beautiful adjustment, but it is an adjustment. Like, mm. even like, I'm tired all the time, but I'm like, I wouldn't change that for the world. Yeah, yeah. I went for a season whereby I wouldn't even see my children as much. I'm busy working doing these crazy hours. I'm like, no, nah, that's dead. That's redundant. Mm. And anyone that tells you that, oh yeah, it's for the great good, blah blah blah, my bro, look, the, that time you get with your children. Don't take that for granted. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so important to have that. Yeah. That's why even for me, it's, it's, it sounds so it sounds so cheesy or whatever, but I'm like, I'm actually grateful that I can do school run. Mm. You know, that things out there, I'm like, rah. Let's be honest, but I know my dad was out working, so he couldn't really do that as much. You know, but children seeing that, oh, mummy and daddy, it, it does a lot to the child psychologically, you know, in, in, a, in a good way. And it's important. You know, yeah, man. And, um, you know, again, in the black community, you know, we're used to having broken homes. You see what I'm saying? We're used to mm. dad not being there mm. um, the majority of the time mm. or mum not being there for whatever reason. But um, you know, you're, you're clearly there for your kids, your family, that, that unit. You get me? It's just a beautiful thing. You see what I'm saying? But do you feel, just as a black man in general, do you feel the responsibility to like be there for your children and so that raw? Like, you know what? We ain't we we ain't carrying on this 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 generational mm. thing. We're gonna we're gonna turn this thing around in terms of being there for our kids. Hundred percent. And I think for me, it's 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 crazy because getting older, I see the blessing in my dad being there. Whereas before, I kind of like ah, oh. especially when you're you're trying to agree, you're trying to figure out life yourself. So for me. <laughs> I was like, a lot of my business weren't, their dads weren't there, and so they kind of be a bit more rebellious, whatever. And then me and my dad would clash a lot. Mm. Obviously, he's obviously a, he's a big man, but I'm like, I'm trying to feel like oh, I'm a big man, and just back and forth, head, at loggerheads, if that makes sense. Mm. And where I'm taller than my dad, I'm thinking, right, like, I can flex it. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I, mean, I mean, I can flex it. <laughs> Don't size up, you know. Listen, but no, but um, that, that, I think the scene that has a foundation, so you know, do you know what? I, I, I see that, I, especially now I'm being older, I get the household unit. You know, I, and I respect the household, and I think it's very important that it has to be out there, if that makes sense. And I think just, from, especially my friends that have grown up not seeing that, I like the fact that especially a lot of them said, you know, I'm making that conscious decision that I'm going to be with someone, but we can have a unit. Even if, say, we end up not being together, we're still going to be united front. Mm. And I think always you got to remember, what's the end goal? You know, you've got to be there. For, I, can't, I can't stress it enough. The children have to, have to play a certain role. They yeah. have to, it's so important. Yeah, man. No. no, I hear that, bro, man. No, it's, it's, it's real talk. And um, yeah, we're going to come back to that. Mm. Yeah, it's another topic. But um, uh, you also do events, bro. Like you're active, you do events. Um, you know, we saw one that you did um, with Stormzy, which was big. Um, talk to us about sort of that event, those events that you do, what you're trying to, trying to put out there in terms of those events. Which event was that? So you know the one um, when you was um, the the about oh, faith. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, because that just threw me. Yeah, yeah. You know what? It's, it's mad because I know it is. I've done so many things here. I didn't yeah, really know. Yeah, yeah, I was like, what was this? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, so that was um linked from, from, from my church. So um 
literally, so what it was, we do like an event called um, Rock Foundation. So just like some of the brothers, again, it's really good, you know, that are new to the faith or in the faith. We're like, what can we do to engage and get more people, you know, to this maybe this... Because how the church kind of formed, obviously, a lot of the guys were, were, were ex-gang members. So, you know, it, it was a way to help them get off the, off the roads, off the streets, and then obviously give their life to Christ, you know, thankfully, all those good things. And then we're doing this event, and I'm just like, you know, what can we need to just reach more people in the community? Mm. Even if they're not off the faith, just, just what can we need to just get them just to just be empowered and encouraged? So, thankfully... Um, Storms goes to the church, so literally we was like, you know what, let's interview Storms and let's just have a conversation, let's just find out about him. Mm. And then thankfully the guys was like, yeah, like, you, like, no, you, you can talk, you know, like, interview him. So yeah. I was like, all right, cool. Um, so had a conversation, you just honest and open. And I think that's, that's what people will like, people that's honest and open, and hence why he's had the success that he's had. And I think for me, it was just, it was just nice to see so many people in the room that are just empowered. Just, you could see people's faces that they were touched. Mm, mm. You know? And I think that's, that's my whole thing, this, this impact on people. What like it's it's all great, you know, what you've achieved, XYZ, but the true currency is how you've impacted someone else's life. Right. And the scene in that room was just yeah, it was it was amazing. People were happy, just people felt moved, even though as a result of that people started coming to church, just different things. The same people just even just you know send messages on the um Instagram platform to saying what they're doing since then. So, you know, I just feel like they say one will move a thousand, two will move ten thousand. Yeah. So I think things like as as we come together more as a community. You know, it's, it's very important. Because I think there's a saying that I live by, each one, teach one. Yeah, facts. And what I like to add on to that way, no one gets left behind. Mm. Do you see where I'm coming from? So if we're seeing more positive re representations, we're seeing more positive role models, whatever industry that you're in, even if it's if you're a lawyer, even if you're a teacher, doctor, whatever it is you may be, because there are people like us that do that. Yeah, that definitely. That are doctors, that are lawyers, that, are, that are musicians, that are um, sports persons. It's, a, it's attainable for us all, however. How many of us are, are been given that insight or the tea? In the information. The information. Okay, it's all, you know, also once you get information and the, the and the know how, that's that's how you can achieve what you want to achieve, if that makes sense. Yeah, man. And um kind of brings me on to my next point, really, of faith and then manifestation. Because mm. manifestation is is Come something on. that you're big on. Mm. Um and then that like, bro, that like, manifestation and then there's work, you see what I'm saying, actually putting in the work. So like, do you feel like manifesting and like looking at your dreams daily, like Talk to us about it actually, there needs to be work involved in that. You see what I'm saying? Like, like how, how do you go about doing that? Not just manifesting, but just looking and saying, no, actually, I need to put in the work as well to, to manifest what you want. I want to give you something so simple. <clears throat> and, it, and it says it in, in, in the Bible, it says, faith without works is a dead faith. Mm. So I'll, I'll capitalise on that. So what that means in a nutshell is, is that, for example, you can go to the altar at church and pray, 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 saying, yeah, financial prosperity or whatever, I want this, I need this, blah, 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 blah but you don't do no work. Mm. Nothing's gonna come your way. But now, if you've spoken it into the atmosphere, spoken to existence, then you go out and to act on it, more often than not, it will come to pass. Because mm. your mind, where you've programmed your mind, you've now commissioned your body to go out there and achieve it. Does that make sense? Mm. But if you just stand there and do nothing, nothing's gonna fall in your lap. Let's be honest, no one's gonna come and give you a handout. It mm. don't work like that, mm. you know? But as you get yourself out of it, as you continue to work day in, day out, and people say, oh, okay, this is what you know, EJ's doing, or this is what JR's doing. Do you know what, okay, I like this, you know, I've got opportunity for him. Mm. Let's be honest, no one's going to go and give you a handout if they can't vouch for you. Facts. You know, if no one's seen what you've done previously, how are they going to say, you know what, that's my guy, but you know what, I'm not too sure. Mm. You know, because the same way you want, before you open your mouth to even say, trying to introduce someone to something, you're going to think, what's the countenance? What, what's, what's, what's his history? You know, what's, what's been the feedback? Do you know what, bro? I always say that, like, regardless of whether people look at it in a bad way or negative mm -hmm. way, Every relationship is a transaction. It is. You know what I'm saying? No, like, no, I don't see it in a bad yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, end it. And, and you want it to be a point where it's beneficial both ways. Yeah, facts. And there's nothing wrong in that. I think life, in a, in a, in a way, you know, life is a series of transactions. Mm. You know, depending on how you want to see it. Mm. And I choose not to see it in a, in a negative connotation. I just see it at the end of the day, look, we're all trying to achieve something, right? Like, especially where, by maybe where people from our certain demographics, let's say, odds are against us, let's be honest, it is yes, what it is. Yeah, yeah. And even stats show that. Yeah. So no one can say, oh, it's a, it's a pity story, or you're just making up. No, it's out there, the stats show, you know. However, I think as, as a community, we're very strong. And I feel like, as you see with other communities, you see they come together they hard. They come together, hard. they come together. Listen, you want that mortgage? I've got the broker for you. Yeah. You want that mortgage? I'll tell you what you need to do financially, yeah. or what you're self-employed. I can tell you what you need, this is what you need to do, and blah, 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 X, Y, Z, boom. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. And I feel what I'm liking, especially now, our generation coming up and those underneath us, that everyone's trying to employ the degrees of separation. Mm. You know, whereby someone, like, okay, cool. I need someone that's 
I'll, I'll use what's, what's relating to me, okay? So I need some insurance for my mortgage. Who knows about insurance? So I know that guy, EJ. Cool, let me sort him out. Mm. Oh, by the way, EJ, I know you do this. Do you know anyone that, I've, this might be random, do you know any, any builders? Yeah, I do actually. Keeps I've got a friend that does roofing. Just keeps the circle keeps going. Keeps the circle going and mm. it just keeps the work within the community. Definitely, you know? bro. And I think that's just the stuff that we need to just... We are adopting. I'm not going to say we need to. It's something that's being done. And I think just seeing it is a beautiful thing. Yeah, man. You know? No, nah, man. And um, I saw one podcast that you did. Um, and one of the things that you said grabbed me. You said, drips versus assets. And then you said, <laughs> off the back of that, bro, you said, you got to understand this is centuries of conditioning. Um, what do you mean by that? So I was watching a documentary and it was talking about the whole Willie Lynch theory. I don't know if anyone's heard of that. No, I ain't heard of it still. That, that one there, I can't lie. You know, that's why I don't watch shows like Roots, because it make me feel away. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> yeah. So you're talking about, so this is like, a, um, I don't even want to call him a philosopher. I don't know if some terminology. But what he does, he, he has this theory that he tells fellow slave owners what to do to get his slaves in check. So he goes around preaching across the Caribbean, across the Americas, and some um, s- s- slave owners how to put their slaves in check that try to revolt. Mm. So it's a condition of the brain now, what they do, and um, do certain things in front of their slaves, so whereby they become conditioned that if they act out, this is what's going to happen, there's a bit of repercussions. And as they're doing this now, it almost teaches the slaves to, to almost love their abuser, mm. right? And it's so funny, because you even see certain things like this even in today's society. And I could even drop a, a, a real life scenario regarding where I used to work, but that's a whole different kettle of fish. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, so, bring that in. Bring that in, bring that in, bring that in. So, um, um, yeah, so that's linking that. And it's almost like, okay, so you've now, obviously, the emancipation of slavery has taken place. Black people are now free in America, cool. Um, however, it's a situation whereby, yeah, we're, we're, they're technically free, but are they free? Because now the laws that have been put in place, it's almost now, it's almost in a way, I don't want to call it like second-hand slavery, but you're, you're almost two steps behind mm. the laws that are now passed. It's almost like you're a human, but you're not a human in the eyes of the, in the law of the land. Mm. Okay, cool. So what people do to almost compensate for that is they want to acquire certain goods to make it feel, for them to feel like, you know, they are that, that middle, upper class to an extent. And don't get me wrong, before anyone goes and starts saying XYZ, I know there was a, a, a very successful black middle class in America. But however, with the whole segregation, even if you're a middle class, in Still their eyes, middle class. <laughs> yeah, in, the words, in the words of um, Jay-Z on, on that OJ track, if you're something, 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 yeah. still, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. And that's a really good, if you've heard that, you need to go to that's a really good song. But yeah, so with that being said, it's the whole condition, wanting to do, get certain uh, tires, get certain goods, you go in certain department stores and want to buy the most expensive thing, it's a real thing. Mm. You know, even like um, what Kanye says, single black female addicted to retail, mm. things like that. It is programming, it is conditioning because we're almost told, like, in order for us to be accepted, we have to now go and acquire certain goods or certain materials to be seen as, okay, I'm, I can now socialise with the bourgeoisie, for example. Mm. But no, it doesn't need to be like that. If, if you see where I'm coming yeah, from. Yeah. It's a thing whereby now, it's just how do we deprogram ourselves? And it takes time. You know, it takes a long, long time. Even to think about even trusting one another to an extent in certain things. Even like, for example, like when it comes to, okay, let me use my own example, doing insurance. People are ah, oh, but insurance, I'm not sure. Ah, oh, they don't pay out, they just take your money. Um, yeah. Oh no, I've been paying this all this time, X, Y, blah, blah, blah. Then I review some of their policies and I'm like, but auntie, your policy expires at this time. Were you even aware of that? No. Or auntie, you've got someone else that did the policy, or Bronny, for example, done mm. the policy. And then you look at the policy, I'm like, nah, auntie, this, is, this, fucking, this, policy's not, <laughs> this policy's not laughing. <laughs> What's going on? But then you want to trust over myself. Mm. And I'm having to say, you know what, let's, best case scenario, let's call the provider. Then the provider says, yeah, what you've got. And now uh, you, you've got pie in your face because you're like, oh, I should have listened to you, I should have trusted you. But you know, I don't even blame you because, again, it's conditioned. In a way, we're kind of taught that, I don't know what's the best way to say this, that sometimes we second guess our own. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's that, it's that trust thing, man. It is. It's that, it's that trust it's, thing. So. It's deep rooted. And, and sometimes I, I, I can understand it to an extent. So these are sometimes whereby even I've experienced whereby I've been burnt by someone I've played with. I'm like, brother, like, you had one job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had one job. But you just had to mess <laughs> up. But that's. Yeah, it's, it's a mad one, it's a mad one. But in that whole thing about the conditioning thing, I just think chains are being broken. And like for me, it's deep rooted and depending on where your, your faith is, I would say it's deep rooted and it's spiritual. Yeah, so that's yeah. why it's very important that, you know, you 
these things have to be broken. That's just that's how I see it. Let's talk about some fun aspects, man. Like, yeah, no, let's, let's do it. Like, like, like speaking of speaking of drip, bro. Like, I see you with these oh, brand yeah. deals, bro. I see you with these. Do you mean suited and booted? Come on, come on. I see you with these brand deals, man. Like, put us up on game, bro, man. Like, you know how's man getting these brand deals, yeah, bro? Yeah. So you know what? Oh, that's that's a really good story. Not many mm. people know this story. So I remember. So when was this now? So this, I think, I started officially twenty. I think it was back in the 2017, raw time has gone, you know. I think it was 2017 I started the blogging stuff. So I remember I was just pieced together some clothes that I had. This was no, I weren't getting no deals at the time or no um, or giftings or anything like that. And I was shooting with my um, my daughter's godfather. So he's my, one of my good friends. So yeah, he's like, oh, he's like you, got, you got drip, you got style. Like, wow, let's take some shots. And obviously he's a photographer. So I said, yeah, why not? Me and my friends now were trying to get to modeling. Like, he's, he's proper tall, um, well, slim at the time. Well, I can't really talk myself, but yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> I was trying to get into modelling, so I remember there was one guy, oh, I can't remember his name, dude. He's doing very well, actually. For He's got a restaurant as well. Um, I forgot his name, but yeah, so he was doing this, um, like, casting for modelling. So yeah, I, thought, no, I was like, yeah, look at this, let's, let's go. So we done it, cool, done, like, a um, model thing, um, like, a little walk, whatever. So I was like, right, let me try to pursue this. Left it, whatever. Um, started working in the pharmaceutical industry, so... So my degree's in biochemistry. So mm -hmm. I've done that now. So working on the farm for a couple of years. So I remember this got to an end. I was like, nah, man, I'm not really too sure. Like, what's, is this for me? Is this for man? I'm not too sure. But so I thought, let me just try and push with um, the blogging stuff because I like, I like, I like to dress. Mm -hmm. So luckily, I spoke to one of my bedrooms now. So um, one guy, you no, know, I said one guy, you know, this time he's a big actor. Um, <laughs> um, Tom Mucci done really well. Oh yeah, shout and out so to funny, Tom he, Mucci. He probably won't even remember this. He won't even, probably won't even remember. But for me, I was like, no, nah, I wasn't until they said that, bro, like, you didn't have to do that, but you did that. And I said, nah, bro, like, I see, like, you know, I'm getting some old suits and that. Well, wow, from Burton, yeah? I said, it's so funny. I told him a funny story. So my first interview that I had, no, I lied. My second interview that I had for a, a job role was actually at Hamley. So I used to work at old school back in the day. Mm. So I said, nah, like, I remember when I went Burton, that's where I got my first ever suit for interview. So some baggy suit, but... Bear, bear man, bear man went Burton and got their <laughs> first... Bear, listen, bear man got Burton. Oh, yeah, bro. straight. So I said, no, nah, it's got a bit of a nostalgic feeling there. I yeah. said, no, nah, you know, how did you get into this? Oh, like, you know, I know this person. Do you know what? What's your email address? I said, yeah. I said, Boom. The email. I see some emails. Yeah, I got my friend EJ. Look, he's trying to, he's doing blogging. You know, really stylish. Check out his Instagram. Boom. CC Connect. Boom. And then from there, they emailed me back saying, look, we, we checked out your Instagram page. We like, you know, what you're doing. We like to send you some clothes. Bruh. Said, Bruh. For me, I feel like I hit the belly. <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> oh, send me some clothes, some gums. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So. There's me excited, like, yeah, I want this one, I want that one, I want this one, I want that one, cool. So they sent me a couple of jackets and a couple of suits. So um, me and my boy went to, there's a spot in, in the, right near Chelsea. So, you know, just took some shots, whatever, I've done a little, created a little video. I had a little, put up on Instagram, got a nice little feedback, boom. Sent that to them, but like, yeah, no, we like that, it's good. So they started sending me some more stuff. So as I'm doing that now, so Brian started reaching out to me, he said, oh, we want you to market this. We'll pay you a, a calm fee. 250? I said, eh, 250? Hold up. What for a one foot? Oh shit, yeah, 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 send me that. So obviously, Straight. done that now. Then I've got, started doing a couple other ads here and there. Then obviously, building up the YouTube channel. So Mrs. was, was involved now. So we're doing the fam, couple family bits and bobs. So that bring, oh, yeah. bring everyone to bring, eat. Oh, bring everyone, 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 everyone to come eat. Chop. Come and eat. So um, there was one that we did whereby it was like a, um, like a baby food company. That was, I really liked that as well. I really had the stuff that more family oriented, mm. personally, so I liked that. Um, then got some other, other ones as well. We went to the London Eye. That was pretty cool. Um, they had to promote some gin. He said, I wasn't even drinking gin them time. I thought, oh, yo, you're the favorite. Yeah, yeah, London Eye, let's go. So went London Eye, did that. That was calm. A couple, and then a couple other ads. And then, yeah, like, just, it's, it's, it's kind of, now you're saying it's kind of sad because I wish I continued to pursue it. Because mm. now as I now got into this industry now, I kind of, I started it, but I kind of put it on a back burner as such. You know, and for me, just just seeing that, even just talking to the missus, cause I've been, I'm very big on this visualising how you want your year to look. I'm, mm. I'm very big on it. I always spend time just, just writing things out in depth on how I want the year to look. So we had done that. Go, I said, no, this year I'm going to get back into the blogging. You know, even when I wanted my guy shut him out all day long. But he's been blogging for long and literally got a big deal. He's a face of next Sick. from blogging. Sick. You know, so when people, excuse me. I remember when people would be like, oh yeah, how's that blogging thing going? You know, kind of like trying to just like, yeah. dismiss it. Like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And, like, and, and, until people see, you start making money, people it. started dismissing it. You this know what I'm saying? So. so, and this team, my bedroom, he's the face of next from blogging. Do you know what I'm trying to yeah, say? Yeah, yeah. So, and I know there's bloggers that I talk to on levels that 
they have lockers that make us some good bread, bro. Yeah, man. When yeah. they don't need to go and do a nine to five. Do, yeah. do you see what I'm trying to say? So I always say with me, I will never knock anyone's hustle because I'm like, as long as you find what you, your niche is, you always make bread from it. Always. Yeah, definitely, bro. You and know? it's it's it's, it's yeah. funny because like, throughout this conversation, we've talked about so many things that so you've done. Many. You see what I'm saying? Like life insurance, events, uh, blogging, mm. um, brand deals, mm. like fashion wear and stuff. And it just brings me to my next point, bro, around multiple streams of income. You see what I'm saying? Like, how important is that, bro? <laughs> uh, it's it come like you was a fly in the wall in my house with the missus. <laughs> that's all. I mean, talking to something now, I'm like, babe, like, this year we've got to be proper active with the multiple streams. Mm -hmm. Guys, so the mistake I made over the last two years, I, I was solely... For, don't go wrong. With this, what I do when it comes to insurance, that's me. I love it to mm -hmm. the team. Don't go wrong. I can't say I was doing anything else. However, there are other things that I will focus on that will obviously naturally bring streams. Because one thing I've learned, don't chase the money. Mm. That's just for me. People might disagree, but I thought when I, when my mind is doing because I purely enjoy enjoy it, the money flows naturally. Mm. But when I start thinking, trying to do maths, calculate, blah blah, you almost you pressurize yourself. Mm. But if the enjoyment's there, people are gonna email you, say, oh by the way, you know we like what you do. We want you to just come and talk. Oh by the way, you know we'll give you a fee of X Y Z. Oh okay, cool. Why not? Mm. Do you see what I mean? So when you're just being authentic and actually enjoy it for the love of it, the money will flow naturally. But yeah, with the streams, I I agree in that. Um, there's various things, obviously got things like rent to rent that people do you know I'm, I'm not versed on that so i can't really go much into that mm. but i know people that are doing well from it i know people that said otherwise but i think one thing i've learned is when it comes to business don't be afraid to try yeah you have to because if it don't work so what at least i try because mm. the worst thing you don't want to say oh what if that's the worst thing. i hate that feeling kick up you know and enjoy it's mad yeah it's just like it's it's worse as you said it's the worst not even trying because what if it, it popped off? You see what I'm saying? Mm. Like, and you didn't try and it. It's funny, because that's how I got into insurance. Mm. That's what personal protection, that's, that's the, you know, the, word, the terminology. So even with that, because I remember now, I was, at a, I was at a loghead whereby the role that I was in before contract come to an end, cool. So I'm like, but I don't want to go back into pharma. Because I'm like, I know the role I want to get in pharma, I kind of felt like it was just, I forgot it was me against the world trying to get to certain levels. They were like, I don't mind, we don't mind having you here, but to have you there, like you have to jump through hoops, hurdles, rings of fire, and it just it was a lot. Mm. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm still relatively young, so I don't mind trying to learn a new skill. And I feel like with my firm move that sometimes with God, yeah, he will orchestrate things in a way whereby it's just everything aligns. <clears throat> so before getting into um insurance, I wanted to get into the financial services. So I was talking to one of my friends at contracts. So she was telling me like look, she contracts with certain companies, she might do like a four-month contract here and there. But then she broke down how much she was earning per month. So I was like, eh? <laughs> said, and with my, with my bedroom, she, she, the way she says it, it's so monotone, you know she's being serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I'm making money. Mm. Said, yeah, EJ, but you know, there's more to it than that, you know. And I'm saying it to, I'm just like, no, like this, this is real. Mm. So I'm thinking, okay, let's, I tried to tweak my CV, put things out, trying to see what could come my way. And a lot of them were saying, look, you've got a wealth of experience, but it's in pharma. We're not sure what you can really do to transfer it into finance. I was like, oh, what can I do? But again, still firmly believing that, you know what? Something's gonna come my way. Mm. And then by chance, again, it's not, the word I for that, it's a testimony for real. Because <laughs> one of my bedrooms now, he's come to, he's come to my house. Um, he's came to the check me, see how I am, innit? And, and see the kids. So he's like, you know what, each look, my bedroom does the XYZ insurance. Calling, just have a conversation. See what he's got to say. So she's, he's called her now. It's oh, like where are you? And she's like, oh yeah, I'm just, I'm just in Brixton. So at the time I was living in Croydon. So from at the time, because late at night, it was like a 35 minute drive to get to Brixton for mine at the time. So I was like, yeah, let's go look her now. Went there now and just bombarding her question. Like, tell me more. Like, what does it entail? What, what do you do? Mm. Not knowing, I'm trying to interview her, <laughs> but you're <laughs> interviewing me. I'm not realizing. Yeah, yeah. So answer whatever she's saying, and I'm just asking. I'm like, do you know what? I think I can do this. You know. Because my whole thing is again, it's so funny, and this is why I always say there's a saying I live by never despise humble beginnings. Mm. And it's funny that I mentioned Hamleys, I don't know why I mentioned about a funny mission because I take my mind back to that. Because again, working there in the first few years when I was there, like obviously college, whatever, it's, it's just fun, isn't it? Just you know, just whatever. Yeah, bro, you know. just a quick check to get the new Air Force and, ones, you know what? Man, <laughs> mom, you already know. So, um, I remember this, but then when I was in uni, now coming to, yeah, when I finished uni, I was still there for a little while. I was thinking, oh. I'm not too sure the direction I want to go through. And then when I'm trying to get into pharma, they're saying to oh, you need to get experience. And so this is the annoying thing for people that are that have graduated uni or trying to get graduate jobs or not too sure what graduate um, scheme they want to go through. So they're kind of like, you need experience. 
But my thing is, how do you get experience unless someone gives you experience? Yeah, there you so go. that's why for me, I'm very conscious that anyone that I know that's trying to get into the industry or any industry that I've worked in previously, I'm more than happy to give them advice or tips. I feel like, again, if no one teaches you or shows you, how are you going to get that role? Mm. You know? But yeah, so back to what I was saying about Hamleys. So with Hamleys, I learned a lot about customer service that I weren't realising at the time. So almost that was my, my training field. That was, my, that was my, literally my battlefield to learn how to speak to people. You know, how, how to show empathy, mm. how to genuinely actively listen, if that makes sense, how to mm. go that extra mile. And it's funny because them times when, it, when I'm going from that, oh, I just want to get paid at the end of the month, man. You know, just get my quick 540 and let's, let's cut keep, Yeah, keep it moving. <laughs> as, as now time has gone by, I'm like, no, that's actually set me in a good standing. Did you see what I mean? So, yeah, fast forward now. So, talking to the lady, XYZ, and she's telling me how the industry works. I'm just proper intrigued. Obviously, again, all I know is pharma. So, I was like, you know what? Yeah, cool. Apply for the role. I've gone there now and I see the director's a black man. I was like, all right, cool. It helps, you know, it bro. Helps. Like, representation it, 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 is key. Bro, get me. And that's, I can't lie, if we for that representation, I'm probably going, oh, I'm not sure. This <laughs> yeah. thing, uh. But the scene, and I see, I, I pre this watch. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I see you. So I was like, all right, cool. Um, so done the process, passed. So, so we're here now. And then it's just, Cool, just went on the train and I learned so much. Mm. Like, with me, even though I was a believer in life insurance, I was like, or oh, having these things in place to cover your family because it's more than just life insurance. It really said, you know what, I need to be an advocate of this. I said, no, this, I'm, I'm going to preach this from the rooftops. Mm. This is going to say that this is what we need as a people. This is the stumbling block in our community. But once we overcome this barrier, we're gone clear. Facts. Because, I said, again, I'm going to go back to the word where it talks about in Proverbs that a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Mm. Do you see what I mean? I'm not saying it's got, it doesn't have to be money for some people, that's fine. You can leave properties, mm. you can leave assets, whatever it may be. You can, if you've got gold or silver, you can leave that behind. But we need to be leaving things behind. Because my whole thing is, and this is how my mind works, it's, 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 some people might think I'm being extreme, but I'm like, for me, I, I deem my success towards my children is what can I leave for them behind mm. to set them up. Bro, we, we talked about a lot, man, like I said, and um, you know, like I said, you've, you've been in doing so many things, like things that I even remind you. Of, you <laughs> no, know, literally. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but bro, like, if, like, if, if anything, if, mm. if, if there was like a three things that you said that, you know what, yeah, even if you watch this for five, 10 minutes, uh, yeah, if you take away these three things, these are the three things I want it to be, what would be the three things? One of them is something I haven't mentioned, but it's kind of, it's kind of around it. So what I would say, don't be afraid to try something. That's out of your comfort zone. Even if you fail, I don't even like the word saying fail, because you learn, it's a lesson. But even if get back up and go again, yeah. you know, and don't be afraid to pivot. And even, it's so mad, because we're, we're having this conversation, I'm even sure, right, I've actually pivoted in different things. Mm. I'm not realised. I said, you know what, because I'm so used to, yeah, on to the next one, on to the next one. And, and almost, don't be afraid to almost take time back and actually appreciate what you have done. Because I can't like, name what, you, what we're talking about. I'm like, raw, like, I've actually done a lot, my guy. And it's, yeah. it's mad because, because I'm trying to look at the goal, or like, this is what I'm trying to achieve. I'm always like, and again, I'm always, I always have my, my own biggest critique. Mm. So I'm always thinking, no, I don't feel like I've done much, or there's more I need to do. But this hearing, I'm like, raw, like, no, you've done quite a bit. So just to obviously highlight that. So don't be afraid to, to fail, because you're not failing, you're learning, mm. you know. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with pivoting, you know, because the skills you've acquired, don't despise those humble beginnings, because obviously that will set you in everything that you do. Um, the last one. Oh, the three pieces of advice. I think for the men, if you, if you have someone that you can definitely confide in, it's important. I wouldn't even, even say, I know we don't go into it, but I would say mentorship is so important. Mm. You know, if there's someone that you look up to, whether it be a big cousin or a big brother, or someone that you know in the industry, don't be afraid to reach out for mentorship. They're so important yeah, that man. it goes so far. Yeah, man, that's big, man. Like, definitely some gems that we can take away from, 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 from that for sure. Um, Bro, it's been a pleasure speaking to you, man. Like, where can people find you? Yes. Where can people <clears throat> hear more about Stay In The Loop advice, what you're doing? Where can people hit you up, man? Yeah, no, so with this year, I'm definitely gonna be more active. Because what, what I found was, I was, I was very, even though I put content out there, I was behind the scenes a lot more. So I'm just focused on doing consultations, because I was very heavily focused in, in the office environment. And I was managing people as well. It, they kind of take a lot of my time. But I so said, this year, put myself more out there. So. We got my page, Stay In The Loop Advice. Mm. Got my personal one, which is EJ underscore Diamond One. You can go on both of those pages, click on the link, and it gives you links to what I've done in the past, a couple of contests that I've done. Um, you can book a free consultation. And yeah, we can review, even if you've got an existing policy, let's review it, because you never know, you know, what that policy you have back then might not be applicable to today. If you're starting as someone that's considering having a, um, a policy, I can do a free consultation for you as well. And especially with COVID, a lot of people, um, 
have recently wanted to take up policies with me because they've had COVID, because mm -hmm. it's really opened their eyes as to like, you know what, this is real. I need to have something in place. So what I will say is something that I, li I live by, don't delay tomorrow, something you can do today. You know, Big. so if it's on your heart, if, if you feel inclined to do so, definitely let's get something sorted out, get a, a consultation for you, maybe your mum and dad as well. Because what I will say, even when we're talking about up the stairs, mm. talking about obviously, you know, friends of ours that have started to lose parents. And for me, that's, that's, that's a scary, a scary thing. I'm like, rah, like... We're getting to that age, man. We're getting to that age. I'm like, rah, we at the age now, man, man's trying to bury up. That's mad. And I'll use this as one well, what I mentioned to you as well, that um, I saw my brother put on his Twitter, and it, it, that one spun me, because he said, like, actually, um, he said that he, his mum called, he didn't pick up. So his brother says, rah, like, why didn't you pick up the phone? And he said, oh, no, I'll get back to her, I'll get back to her. He said, no, you don't do that, bro, because you don't know that could be the last time that you speak to your mum. Mm. And this hearing, I said, wow. <laughs> That's nah. Then he's like, one calls, I'm making sure I pick up. Definitely. So I've been the victim of it, I'm like, oh, I'll get back, I'll get back. But now I'm like, anytime my mum calls me, they're like, no, no, dad, yeah, yeah, everything good? Okay, cool, cool. If anything, I'm doing this, but I'll call you back afterwards. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. this, I would encourage that as well. Yeah, man, big man. Well, bro, man, it's, it's, been, it's been heavy catching up, man. Yeah, no, as I said, bro, we've been known for a long time. But yeah, bro, man, looking forward to seeing what your journey is for, for this year mm -hmm. and beyond. And yeah, man, best for coming through, B, oh, man. It's always a so pleasure, much. bro. Come on, man. Thank you so much, man. Guys, pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Honestly, thank you so much. You know, so bad, yeah. I'm going to say it's not um, that kebab shop that's got the wings. That is the oh, El Hack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to El Hack, guys. Does he get it out here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah.